my bathroom drain keeps blocking. We used Drano, we used a snake, it worked for a couple weeks, and now it's blocked again. Gotta change the plumbing down there. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about some renovations, renovation stories, and talk about renovations and trades as it related to education. Welcome to the Mr. Mike Podcast, Wrong Answers Only, Episode 5. Let's get to the music. So I've been working on the house uh, for the last, you know, two years since we bought it. And we're doing doing things slowly as much as we can by ourselves. Getting some help from, you know, my father-in-law and my father and stuff like that. And then the other day I was working on the trim to the bathroom door. Because the trim was all broken and we had to shimmy the door. And we had put it new hinges. And we had redone, redid the bathroom. But the pandemic, you know, put a hold on that stuff. So we're doing things slowly. And I don't, I don't have all the tools. So I didn't have a compressor and a nail gun. So I did it by hand. But the problem with the door frame is that it's not straight so you have to make it look straight give that visual illusion so it's not perfect but it's it's good enough like the frame the door is also a bit warped right because it's old uh then i start filling in the gaps with caulking and stuff and i gotta sand it i'm gonna paint it nice and white and add some handlebars and things like that to the bathroom that's a process and then downstairs in the basement you know half the basement's been ripped open people that sold us the house had paid somebody to come do renovations and they added like two to four inches around the basement. So they extended the wall and insulated it. Wall behind it's not insulated. It's like cardboard styrofoam packing on the walls because it's the old stuff from the 80s. It does nothing. So it gets really cold, right? And I'll have the basements ripped open. And then as, as the temperatures uh, warm up, I'm going to rip the rest of the basement open on the corner side of the house. And we're going to we're gonna build a laundry room and stuff. And, you know, things take time, especially like you're not a professional. But, you know, you get help that people know what they're doing and stuff. So I'm looking forward to doing some of that. But gee, if I could do it now and then all of a sudden it drops to minus 40, the house is going to be freezing. So we did a lot of painting and plastering. Well, I should say I did because I did a lot of it. Added some lights to fix some electrical stuff. If you're doing anything like that, they always tell you, and, and you really should. You should always get a professional to do help you with that stuff. I have some funny stories. When I was younger, my dad used to take me to do some jobs with him. And there was this guy, this little, uh, this little Italian guy. He's you know, older than me. He's closer to my sister's age. And we had to forget it. We went to a building and we were putting down flooring and I, I was doing something else. I, I don't know what I was doing. I was doing something else. I think I was painting or plastering or something like that. But I must have been a teenager. And this guy, he's he's putting down a... Uh, He's putting down flooring. I think he was putting down flooring, but he was using the staple gun for something. <laughs> he staples himself down to the floor in his knee pads. And he starts scraping. He goes, I need help. I can't move my knees. <laughs> I can't move my knees. We always had little little times like that. Another time we went to... Um, we paint, painted uh, the exterior of this house, a large house in uh, the west end of Montreal. By the water, there's tons of spiders in the summer, tons of spiders. And I, and at the, when I was young. I must have been 16. Petrified of spiders when I was younger. And I would be like painting the house, you know, this green paint. Die spider, die spider. And there's tons of spiders painted into the house. Another time, we were putting up walls. We are doing a bathroom. I think I think it was a couple of years later after that time, he, he uh, stapled himself into the floor. And this guy, he, he's putting up uh, a cement board. And what does he do? He puts a screw right through the board into the copper pipe. And then water starts s- splashing out of the wall. Pshhh, absolutely everywhere. You're supposed to mark the studs down before you put that stuff up. And it was always something like that. Always something like that. That time he, he was with us and we picked up a Christmas tree. He put it on top. We're like, did you tie it down? Yeah, I tied it down. We're driving on the service road. What happens? I'm looking in the I'm looking in the mirror on our passenger side, and the Christmas tree goes flying, go absolutely flying. Good thing nobody was behind us because it would have went into somebody's windshield. And that that guy was a terrible worker. He would always always make mistakes. It's like dumb mistakes, absolutely dumb mistakes. He just he just didn't pay attention, and I think partly it was just because he didn't care. But he just he just wasn't one of the sharpest tools in the in the shed, you know. Well, I've had some we have some funny stories about that guy. Lots of funny stories. Talking about, you know, renovations in our house. I mean, we, when we were doing the bathroom, 
we had to level the floor and so we use self-leveling cement and we must have poured it well before you pour it you clog up all the holes all around and we did that poured self-leveling cement and everything seemed to be going well and then i hear something so i go down to the basement and it's raining liquid cement and i'm putting these buckets and i'm trying to block the holes and everything so we don't lose all the cement so then you let that cure and oh man how much we must have wasted 100 bucks on, on liquid cement there next time around we make sure all the holes are blocked everything's good what do we do we pour liquid cement to level it out again and it still did it and it was coming out of the floor in the basement good the good thing i ripped apart half the basement on, on that section but it but it was dropping into the into the shower into the basement bathroom what a mess uh, and then we're like good second time my father-in-law takes over because he's gonna he's gonna lay the ceramics down for me while i was at work and then i get home must have, must have been 4 o'clock in the afternoon or something. And he's about to pour liquid cement and I see him doing it. And I'm like, I don't know. Should be good. Let's go check the basement. Check the basement. Liquid cement is poured everywhere again. And we blocked up all the holes. And it's still doing it. It was such a disaster, right? And that wasn't from mistakes. That was because it was finding its way through like the smallest crack, you know. But uh, stuff like that happens all the time. Yeah. When we were doing the bathroom, part of the ceiling was a drop four or five inches over the over the shower bathtub area so i had a friend of mine come over and we we took it out <laughs> and i had to go in the attic you know put a mask on put sunglasses on put a hat on put long sleeves on and go into the attic and go through the insulation on my stomach because there weren't really any boards anywhere so you're you're really crawling on the joists and then go move all the insulation from that section and then by the time you get to that part, it's so small, I could barely fit in there. And I'm like stuck in this hole. So that when we take it down, all the insulation falls. And it's terrible. Honestly, you go in the attic, you can't breathe, you're sweating, you got all this stuff. And it's tough work. And then we, we did it. And then we put up, you know, chip rock and stuff like that and temporarily because we were going to redo it. Then I had to go back in the ceiling to run electrical wires to find the old wires to what see what was connected and to what. That was another trip in there. And I still got to go back in the attic one day and I have to fix all the... Um, it's like the styrofoam boards that are that are slanted into where the air vents because some of them are broken so that's going to be another job and a half i don't know if i'll be able to do it because they're really hard to get to some of them, some of them but that's for that's for another time it's funny that you know we try not to talk about the pandemic but in the last two years everything is tied to the pandemic and especially even during renovations you know you couldn't go get materials and things like that and, and most recently they restricted uh, people do their vaccination status and discriminated against that beginning of the pandemic we had somebody come in do us a quote for the gutters around the house you know for the water flow to move away from the house because you don't want that for your foundation <laughs> the guy came did a quote and then we didn't see them for two years, year and a half. Even contacted them, didn't hear from them. And then one day they called me and were like, yeah, it's for the gutters. And this French lady is like, uh, we're going to come tomorrow. I'm like, all right. I'm like, we modified the price. And she's like, no, no, no. It's, a, it's, it's a, you know, whatever it was. I don't know. Something like in the 4,000s. And I'm like, no. And I said, we, I said, we repaired some of it ourselves. I said, so it's just basic gutters going around with the drops. And I had the, the second quote and I sent it to her. And she's like, oh, okay. Anyway, so they came and they did that. And that's just, you know, took almost two years because the pandemic so a year and a half and it's just, it's just some of the things that the pandemic's done is you know some people are not getting you know regular checkups and tested for you know cancer issues and general health issues and just you know appointments or maybe if you even gotten married or if you had a baby shower bridal shower appointments everything got pushed things got canceled what about people that bought plane tickets and lost deposits or you know airline companies don't want to give them money back or tickets even if you bought tickets to concerts that got canceled you get your money back there's a whole thing with that so it's the same thing with renovations with the house like we're, we're still 95 percent done the bathroom there's stuff to do which i'm going to do gradually when i'm doing that now but that should have been done first year and you know we started planning it i actually demolished it right before the pandemic hit and the pandemic hit what march 2019 and that's right before literally i, I demolished the bathroom then nothing was open for like <laughs> three months then you start doing some stuff in the summer and then oh uh, you can't go see anybody it's illegal to go private gatherings and wear a mask and you're afraid and it was just frustrating and i know many people feel the same about it you know you gotta you gotta plan as for the future and you gotta keep going forward and hopefully everything works out for the best and you know i got big ideas and stuff like that so i mean if there's anybody out there 
that uh, you know that does renovations or DIY stuff and they want to share pictures on Twitter you know tag me DM me I'll share them and we have a little thread about that stuff because I know there's some people out there that do do it I've seen some photos and it's interesting because then you get you know different ideas from other people too I saw some interesting bathroom pictures from uh, recently actually a couple weeks ago from somebody who does it uh, professionally you know talking about renovations and uh, you know DIY projects and stuff in the house. If you have children at home, young kids, teenagers, um, I strongly encourage you to show them different skills or things, expose them to different uh, trades, if you would. There's more to school and education than just college and university. And I know it works different in the States than in Canada, but in Canada, we do have trade programs. Like you can go right into trade programs and stuff. And a lot of them are, you know, they're subsidized right now. in you know, in our society, we're short thousands of workers in the trade industry, you know, mechanics, uh, plumbers, electricians, uh, you know, general, general workers like that. It's so in demand. You can make a really, really good living right now. And maybe not necessarily working for yourself right away, but you know, there's always th that avenue too. But just in, just in terms of skill set, like, you know, there's always people looking for, uh, for labor. We're so short labor in Canada. Part of that is our immigration hasn't kept up and our birth rates lower than it used to be in the past. So we're not replacing workers as much and, uh, you know, things cost more and you're trying to get something done or, you know, if you're not doing it yourself, calling a company or calling somebody and, uh, you know, they're booked. They're booked because they can't find labor. They can't get work done fast enough. So in terms of renovations and stuff, in regards to the connection to education and kids and, you know, workers growing in society, um, we need uh, we need skilled labor. So that's uh, that's something to consider when, um, when kids are considering what are they going to do in their life encourage them to, to, to uh, think about stuff like that uh, my family tried to encourage me to do that kind of stuff but uh, you know I could do some but it's not not really my it's not really something that I gravitate towards but even in high school they didn't really encourage us to consider those options even though the programs were available outside of high school once you graduated so um, I wish we would do more of that in education too for it's time for a wrong answer only tweet. What is the best way to hunt a vampire? Wrong answers only. Tammy writes, in a spaghetti strap dress with my hair in a ponytail and a bright gold necklace on to accentuate my neck. I guess I have attractive vampires, right? Vampires are only human on Twitter, writes, carefully and during the daytime. They sleep in dirt filled coffins with wolf guardians. At least that's the story they tell. Graham writes, eat steaks, rare. Rin writes, loudly, unarmed, and at night. <laughs> this is your quest, using using my neck as bait. Garrett writes, don't answer his questions. I'll call it, no interview with a vampire. <laughs> that's good. Joseph writes, start counting your marbles. Rob writes, at night with your bare hands. Mark writes, with, uh, with onions and a raw T-bone. Five Coat writes, find a political campaign. Oh boy. Picky Bookworm writes, tanning bed in front in the front yard, free tans after dark. That's pretty good. Mark Britt writes, move to an island with a small population and a new priest. Yeah, that's a good idea. Fight for Freedom writes, well, if this vampire is in Canada, most definitely on a ski do or by snowshoes. <laughs> I like Canadian vampire. And these are some of the answers. The last one uh, we're going to read is from Allison. Allison writes, eat a garlic and anchovy pizza right before you hunt the vampire. Well done, everybody. Keep a lookout for those other wrong answer tweets. I'm going to leave you with some final thoughts. I just want to encourage everybody to listen to other people, listen to other point of views, different perspectives. I encourage everyone to look into different sources of media, and not just what you see on TV, not just what you see on social media, not just what you see on Facebook or clickbait links and stuff like that, but really, um, really keep an open mind about things and question a lot of facts and information or especially statistics like numbers are numbers. They're statistics. They're not truth. How they're used depends on who's giving the opinion and who's giving the perspective. Statistics are not facts their numbers and you know keep an open mind about things like we were saying just before you know talk to your neighbors talk to your friends talk to strangers you know there's more out there stay safe if you're protesting protest peacefully if you're not then you're not that's all good This has been the Mr. Mike Podcast, Wrong Answers Only. Tune in next time for more silly tweets and different discussions, possible interviews. Currently working on an education episode where people are going to send in some uh, sound bites about their experiences teaching during the pandemic. So that might be later, but we're going to have to put it all together. You can follow me at Mr. Mike MTL on Twitter, at Mr. Mike MTL on Getter. You can also follow me on Instagram at Mr. Mike MTL Poetry. Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you all next time.
next time. <laughs>